Hey everyone, in this video, I will walk through the exact seven steps I use to build applications using AI. Using this method, I built the following SaaS application with monthly recurring payments, admin panel, light and dark mode, and basically all the features SaaS needs. By the end of this video, I will also show you how to deploy the project on custom domain on using Cloudways. First, let's have a look at the demo of the project. Website has content both for coming soon section as well as when the product is already launched. We have sections like what to expect, to join the waitlist, some of the powerful features, we have testimonials, get notified when we launch, we have pricing section, and we have frequently asked questions. Website supports both light mode and the dark mode. In order to be notified when we launch, when you enter the email, you need to verify that as well. The entire website has its own admin panel. On dashboard, you're going to see some overall information. You have dedicated plans section, which is synchronized from Lemon Squeezy. You have the entire subscriptions place. You can see users of your platform and email leads, which you can also export. Admin panel also has a content management section. You can create or edit or delete testimonials. You can manage pages, FAQ items, features, or what to expect. All those landing page content can be managed from admin panel. Pricing plans should be created inside the Lemon Squeezy dashboard and in your project you're going to execute PHP Artisan Lemon Squeezy sync plans and assuming you have correct information written in your .in file, pricing plans will be synchronized into your local database. Once you create account and purchase any subscription plan, you have this subscription menu item available. That displays you your current active subscription and you have possibility to easily switch into another plan. To show the power of this starter kit, I created two different plans, starter and pro plan, and I created two features, feature one and feature five. Feature five is only for pro plan. Feature one is for starter plan. Right now, because my current plan is a starter plan, I am able to access feature one. This is just testing page. However, because I have starter plan, I am not able to access pro plan feature. I get the following message. This feature requires a pro plan or higher please upgrade your subscription. If I decide to cancel my subscription and then I decided to access feature one, I say the following message. You need an active subscription to access this feature. The application has built-in middleware, which checks the current user's active subscription. And based on that, it allows access to specific roads or blocks. If you want to create something similar, I created a series of prompts using which I generated the following application. You can find the link in the video description, it is free. Please keep in mind that these prompts do not magically give you a fully working SaaS application. These prompts are just initial prompts. Each of them might need iterations. This obviously will take several hours depending on your prompting and coding skills. If you don't want to spend that much time on this, and if you simply want to get the source code, you can check it on my website, thecodetolic.com. For first 50 users, the source code will be 19.99. After 50 users, the price will go up into 29.99. Check it on my website, thecodeholic.com. At the end of the video, I will deploy the project on custom domain and I will share every single step how I did that. As a hosting solution, I'm gonna use Cloudways, which is also sponsoring this video. Cloudways provide managed web hosting for your web applications. It is not shared hosting, meaning you don't share resources with others. It is not VPS hosting, meaning you don't need to set up the web server and you don't need to manage the web server on your own. Instead, it is managed web hosting, which means Cloudways is managing the entire web server infrastructure and you only get what is important to you. Tools which will help you to deploy your project and manage it. Project or projects, you can deploy multiple projects on a single server. Cloudways support multiple hosting providers and the pricing starts with $11 per month. To get started with Cloudways, check the video description. They offer three days free trial, no credit card is required. However, if you decide to purchase their hosting, you can use my coupon code the code holic and you will get 30 percent off on the first three months thank you cloudways for sponsoring this video now let's dive into the exact steps i follow to build applications using ai number one step is to create project manually don't rely on ai for this part most ais don't know the latest scaffolding tools for example i created a laravel project with react typescript and tailwind using the official starter kit it's fast and reliable. If you are new to Laravel, 
go to herd.laravel.com. You can find the software for your operating system. It exists on Windows and Mac. Download and set it up, in which case you're going to have Composer command globally available. Then you're going to open Terminal and you can execute Laravel new and your project name. I have chosen React, Laravel's built-in authentication and Pest for testing. I'm going to choose yes here. Then open the folder in your favorite AI-based editor. I open this inside Windsurf. You can use Cursor or even JetBrains Juni. It's up to you. Open Terminal and execute Composer Dev. Find the following line and open this in the browser. Now we have our Laravel application with React up and running with authentication and registration. Step number two is to break down project requirements. For this, I opened ChatGPT and explained what I was building. I even didn't type anything. I was talking to ChatGPT. GPT. Then I asked it to generate atomic prompts, each one doing just one thing. For example, set up authentication or create pricing tables with Lemon Squeezy. Then I took all those prompts and save in a spreadsheet. Step three is to execute prompts and iterate over this. It's quite probable that Prompts given by ChatGPT are very generic and not very specific. So before giving prompt to AI-based coding editor, I gave it to ChatGPT and asked it to elaborate on this and give more details without being too specific or some framework or language agnostic. ChatGPT gave me much more detailed prompts, which I took and gave it to Windsurf. You might not get the results you are looking for for the first prompt. You might need to elaborate a little bit but because you have already split the project into multiple subtasks, it is much more realistic you can make the task working after one or two iterations. Most AI coding assistants do not have access to recent information. If a code generated by AI doesn't work as expected, you have two options. Option one is to ask AI to elaborate on the problem which is the first thing I recommend to do. Option two is to check the package documentation which doesn't work and either give AI the documentation link and ask to fix the problem using the documentation or elaborate the documentation yourself. Sometimes the second approach saves your time and you get exactly what you want much faster. Okay, after one, two, three iterations, you made the task working. Congratulations. Next is to make the review. AI overcomplicates things and might generate insecure or garbage code. As a developer, you are responsible for the code quality. So, you should make reviews. I typically make reviews on the places where logic is written, how data is retrieved, how it is saved, how validations are done. But I might skip detailed reviews on the HTML part because I really do not care how CSS classes are applied as long as I have the result in browser I am looking for. After review, you're going to use the git and commit as often as you can. Once reaching to a meaningful state, always make a commit. Otherwise, AI might break your code and it might not be able to recover this. You need working git commit history to be able to recover it at any time. Next, you can search for possible optimizations. Once you make each task working and make a commit, you can ask AI to optimize it. Split large working components into smaller, meaningful components and organize them into proper folders. Optimize database queries, move some parameters into environment variables, and so on. Great! Now you have completed the full flow of your prompt. Now you can move on to the next prompt. You can take that very generic prompt, give it to ChatGPT, ask to give you more details about that without being too specific or technology agnostic. Take that prompt, give it to your coding editor and continue the following flow. Now, since you know my whole working flow, how I build applications with the help of AI, it's time to deploy the project on Cloudways. Now we're going to start working on to deploy the project on custom domain. For this, we're going to use Cloudways, which is run by DigitalOcean. I'm going to add a new server. I'm going to choose a Laravel version and let's choose DigitalOcean and we can choose the server type, general purpose, basic, CPU optimized. Oh, and yeah, standard, not the premium, but the standard, which is the most like the cheapest one, $11 a month. Okay, good. Next, I'm going to choose the location. I'm going to choose Amsterdam and we're going to click launch now. The server has been installed and there's also one application running on this server. 
We can access the server details from the following area. I'm going to click on settings and packages, then click on packages, scroll down below, and I'm going to install supervisor. Now let's go into application section and we're going to see this application. So I'm going to click on this and right here we have the access to the application URL. I'm going to click on this and this is going to open in a new tab. Now we're going to install the project on the server. For this, I'm going to go into the server section and I'm going to use the following SSH credentials to authenticate into the server. All right, now I'm authenticated inside the server and we're going to navigate inside applications folder. And here we have only one random named folder. Now we're going to go inside applications. We're going to click on application settings and we're going to edit this folder. I'm going to call this SAS Larkit. I'm going to also reset file and folder permissions. And now I'm going to navigate into SAS Larkit folder. That contains public HTML inside which we have a Laravel project. We're going to delete everything from here. Now I'm going to generate public private keys and add public key into my repository because this is private repository. So I executed SSH keygen command, generated public private keys. Then I get the public key and add it into my repository. Now I copied SSH version of URL and then we're going to execute git clone the URL and the dot to identify and clone it inside the current folder. Now we're going to copy .env example file inside .env and we're going to execute composer install. We have PHP 8.2, but we need at least 8.3. So we're going to go into our server settings and packages packages, and we're going to change the PHP version into 8.3. Once the progress is completed, we can reopen the terminal and execute a composer install. We have to generate the application key as well. We have to create storage link as well. And then we need to connect to the database. The database information is located inside application, access details, and this is the database credentials. However, the default database is, is SQLite and I'm going to stick with this and I'm going to execute PHP artisan migrate. Next, we need to execute npm install and npm run build. Next, we can refresh this default URL and we're going to see our application up and running. The data, what you see right now, what to expect, or some powerful features or testimonials. All of this data is either coming from the database or if there are no records in the database, the default values are applied. So those three records are default values, hard coded inside the code. Of course, you can modify this, but we don't have plans at all. For this, we have to execute the artisan command to synchronize plans from Lemon Squeezy. So we have to open .en file and we have to provide API key, webhook secret and store ID here. I provided actual values and then we're going to execute PHP artisan lemon squeezy sync plans. Now it synchronized the plans and created four new plans. Now if we check in the browser, we're going to see plans are available. Now, if you want to assign custom domain to your application, first you have to purchase the custom domain. If you already have one, you have to update DNS records to point to the following server. You might use your primary domain or even you might use subdomain of the primary domain, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I have the codeholic.com domain from here and I'm going to add a new record, which is going to be a record and I'm going to give it subdomain sas.thecodeholic.com, which is going to point to the IP address of the server. And this is going to be DNS only. Once you create this A record, you need to go into your application. You need to click on domain management and you're going to add new domain. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to make this as primary domain. Next, we're going to click on SSL certificate. We have to enter email in the domain and we have to install certificate. Next, we're going to go into access details and we're going to open our new domain and it works. Now, since we have the supervisor already installed, we need to go into application settings, supervised jobs, and we're going to add a new job. We're going to leave everything into default. The connection driver is going to be Redis and we have to change this inside the end file of our application. We can run more than one process if we want. We specify the timeout, sleep time. The queue is going to be the default in our case. You can customize this as well. And we are going to hit on save. Next, we're going to open our EN file and inside queue connection, we have to provide Redis here. Now we can view the job status and it is right now running. And whenever there will be something to process, this queue will take care of this. As an example, if you want to export all early access emails, you click the export that happens in the background and that queue will handle that. Final part will be to adjust the remaining end of configuration variables. As an example, we can provide correct 
application name. We have to change the application environment into production. We are going to turn off debugging and we have to provide the correct application URL. Of course, you want to send emails from your application as well, in which case you have to change the mail mailer into SMTP and you have to adjust the SMTP credentials such as host, port, username, password, and optionally, you might need to also add mail encryption right here. For different SMTP providers, these parameters are changing. All right, my friends, now you have entire my working flow, how I build applications using AI. If you want to get the source code, you can check it on my website, thecodetalk.com. If you are interested only in series of prompts, you can get it from the description of the video. The SaaS project uses Laravel. If you're absolutely new to Laravel, you can check also my Laravel for Beginners course, which I genuinely believe is the best Laravel for Beginners course out there. I actually offer first three hours for free you can watch it you can understand what's the course about what is my teaching style and you will have enough time to make the decision thanks everyone and see you in the next time